Welcome to the Kansas Sports Podcast, the inaugural edition of the Kansas Sports Podcast. I am Joey McWilliams, and I am pleased to have with me as my guest today the commissioner of the Kansas Collegiate Athletic Conference, Dr. Scott Crawford. I know that there are many things that the conference has going on right now, and as we are winding down this 2018-2019 year, your offices are in Wichita, and that brings me to one of the announcements you made recently. In 2019-2020, the NAI will be hosting the National Men's Wrestling Tournament right there in Wichita. Yeah, we're we're just super pleased on the the, the NAI's commitment to – to keeping that national championship here in the Midwest. Uh, it's been in Kansas before in Topeka, moved to Des Moines, Iowa for a couple of years. And I'm just really pleased that Visit Wichita, their their sports arm is going to bring that to, uh, to Wichita, Kansas and, and be in a great venue there at, um, at Harmon Arena out in the north side of town in Park City. And um, just uh, it's a fantastic opportunity for us as a as an aspiring wrestling conference to, uh, to to have our teams have a little bit maybe a little bit better access and a little bit closer access to uh, participating in that national championship. Uh, we are we're fairly new at this as a conference. We've been involved with men's wrestling with uh, our six teams for about two years now, and uh, just it's a it's a great opportunity to know that. Uh, the pursuit of national championships and All-American status will be a lot closer to home for the six KCAC schools. The KCAC has men's wrestling as a sport that it oversees, also women's wrestling, which the NAI recognized in 2018-2019 for the first time as a sport, and your conference actually oversees 30 sports individually, and that includes eSports, which is something that is is coming along as well. Dr. Crawford, talk about the spring sports then, and you all have opportunities maybe to host the NAI National Tournament on first or a second round level in softball coming up. We've been really lucky. The the city of uh, Dodge City, Kansas, put in a, uh, they actually put in a bid to be the national championship host it actually was awarded to Springfield, Missouri, which I, I'm, I'm excited about that because it's still close to home for the 13 KCAC softball programs. But, but last year, Dodge City hosted an opening round uh, tournament, you know, four, a four-team tournament, the winner which goes on to that final site. Uh, we've already been awarded a, a second uh, opportunity for this spring to partner with Dodge City and do that again. Uh, one of the KCAC automatic qualifiers will we'll, we'll participate in that tournament. And what's new this year is we're, we're hopeful that the NAI will grant us a, a second berth, or a, I should say a second bid, and we would have two tournaments going on simultaneously. Uh, that would be May 12th through the 15th, uh, hopefully out there in, in Dodge City. It uh, would be fantastic for the, the KCAC to have its two automatic qualifiers participating in, in two separate tournaments going on at the same time. And uh, we're just really fortunate to have a great partner, uh, Paul Lewis, out there in, in Dodge City and, and uh, his group. Just uh, it's, 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 it's fun for us as a conference when communities, convention and visitors bureaus, uh, other you know, chambers of commerce are wanting to partner with us and help us with uh, defraying a lot of that to financial cost and bringing uh, you know, a greater opportunity and greater access for KCAC teams and automatic qualifiers. Speaking now with Dr. Scott Crawford, the commissioner of the KCAC here on the Kansas Sports Podcast. This is a conference, Dr. Crawford, that has a rich history that dates back to the turn of the century. Not the turn of the 21st century, the turn of the 20th century. (laughs) And it seems like that every school in Kansas that has a four-year athletic program has at one point in time been associated with the KCAC. Yeah, we, 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 we date back to 1890. It's, uh, it's wild that, um, uh, that we have that kind of history, that we're approaching 130 years of existence. Uh, we believe that we are the second oldest actively uh, continuous operation among uh, conferences in the United States. There's a group in Minnesota uh, that, uh, that, that bests us by a couple of years. And, you know, you got the, the Pac-8 or the Pac-10 or the Pac-12, whatever they're called these days, and <laughs> the Big Ten and other, you know, these Division One conferences that uh, have quite a rich history as well. But it's a, it's a nice feather in our cap to be the oldest continui- continuously operating NAI conference. And um, you're exactly right, Joey. The, uh, you 
you know, the K-States, the KUs, the Wichita States of the world, they all have a at least a stepping stone or a, or a, you know, a, a part of time where they, they came through and were part of what the KCAC is today. Uh, you know, that's a significant jump up, obviously, to the, the Big 12 or to uh, the, um, the American Athletic Conference where those schools now participate. But uh, you know, 100 years ago, they were, they were instrumental in getting this off the ground. That's right, and it will always be a part of their history and of your history as well. Well, good programs that have come through, quality athletes, student athletes that have come through as well, and we should recognize the National Player of the Year in men's basketball this year came from the KCAC and Cameron Hunt from Southwestern. You know what? Is, I mean, Cameron, what a fantastic student athlete, uh, just a, a tremendous basketball player. Uh, I think if people saw him as a freshman, they would they would be probably a little bit stunned that he uh, that he grew the way that he did. He developed the way that he did. Uh, all the credit goes to Cameron, uh, his coaching, uh, the, the other people involved. Um, and what's uh, what's such a treat for me is that Cameron is the third. Um, young man in our league in the last five years to be the NAI Division II National Basketball Player of the Year. Uh, Grant Greenberg, two years ago at uh, University of St. Mary, and Joe Mitchell, uh, a, a transfer from Wichita State, a uh, local kid the, from Wichita, actually played at Friends University for two years, and he was the National Player of the Year. So we've had three of the last five National Players of the Year at that level, and uh, that just, I think that speaks volumes to the, uh, the quality of student athletes, the quality of the teams, and the difficulty of the competition within the conference. Dr. Crawford, your conference now, we've talked about the history and teams and programs that have come through there. Now with 13 full member schools, 10 in Kansas, one in Nebraska, one in Oklahoma, and now one in Missouri. You have Avila, and that brings in even a little bit more of the Kansas City market. Talk about overseeing that many programs and your responsibility. It makes it a little bit more challenging, and a lot of people will. They always ask, "Well, why do we continue to be, you know, the Kansas Collegiate Athletic Conference, the KCAC, uh, our social media account, KCAC Sports, you know, across Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, that kind of thing?" Uh, quite honestly, the answer is the there, there's a lot of brand value in Kansas Collegiate Athletic Conference and KCAC Sports. Uh, you know, York College in Nebraska, Avila University in Missouri, and, and uh, Oklahoma Wesleyan down there in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Uh, they've, they've acknowledged to us as they came in as, as members that uh, there was really no need to change that name, to change that branding, that there was a lot of brand value even for them being out of the state of Kansas. They're recruiting and uh, they're doing quite a bit of, of uh, you know, there's, this, there's, there's a lot of connection to the state of Kansas. And, and maybe a little shout out to some of my fellow uh, conferences that are out there. You know, this, you know, the, the Big 12 is among the greatest uh, NCAA Division One conferences, has a great presence here in the state of Kansas. Uh, the MIAA uh, has great presence in the state of Kansas, is probably the best Division Two conference in the NCAA. Uh, the Jayhawk Conference is arguably the best NJCAA conference in the country, and and the KCAC expire, uh, aspires to be one of the the great NAI conferences. So, uh, I hope people really understand what a great athletic background this state has when it comes to intercollegiate competition, and uh, and uh, just really exciting times that uh, the KCAC is is growing and and you know we've we've reached out beyond our our Kansas borders but uh you know there's just so many wonderful opportunities for for high school uh, student athletes in this in this state in this region to go on and play either at the NCA Division one, Division two level, the the junior college level, and uh, and and playing for the uh, the, the KCAC schools. So it's uh, it's a great opportunity for them. The 2018-2019 athletic year is in the home stretch now with the spring sports and just a few weeks until the playoffs. We talked about the possibilities of, of hosting for the KCAC. Can you take us through the end of this athletic year and and is there anything in particular to look forward to in 2019-2020? Yeah, that's a great question, Joey. So we we will crown ten different conference champions in a in a period of about eighteen days, 
it's a it's a whirlwind for <laughs> for me and my staff here in the conference office. Uh, we have a great partnership with uh, Garden City, and so our men's and women's golf tournaments will be out in Garden City. Uh, we have a wonderful relationship with Great Bend, and our baseball and softball tournaments will be out there at the Great Bend Sports Complex. Um, just you know, tribute to the state of Kansas in that regard. Our uh, our men's and women's track and field meets will be at uh, Kansas Wesleyan University. We rotate that among uh, school sites, and it's their turn and their opportunity to host that. Um, we are a uh, we are a lacrosse conference through some associate membership, and we'll be at uh, uh, Charles Burkle Stadium on the campus of University of St. Mary in Leavenworth uh, toward the end of the month for our lacrosse championships, and then our tennis championships are up in Topeka, Kansas. So uh, we, 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 we really are striving to get to neutral site championships to give a, a, a touch of class and, and a little bit of elegance to, uh, to those events and, and trying to play on uh, you know, nicer fields and nicer venues and uh, give our student athletes and fans a, a greater opportunity. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, uh, in a, about a month from now, I'll, I'll take a break and maybe catch my breath a little <laughs> bit and see how things go. Uh, but uh, just a tribute to how well the schools cooperate. We have great coaches and, and student athletes, and uh, we really, really want to deliver a, a great opportunity for them. Uh, as for uh, the next year, uh, we are we are working hard on extending our uh, associate membership in lacrosse. We will be 12 men's and 12 women's teams deep in lacrosse in the 1920 school year. Uh, two automatic qualifiers for the national invitationals in those sports. I'm really excited about that. And we're growing uh, to the point where we hopefully will be able to announce uh, men's and women's uh, swimming and diving as, uh, as conference sports, possibly as early as 1920, but it might be in 2021. So uh, a lot on the uh, horizon and uh, continued growth and expansion in terms of associate membership is, is well within our wheelhouse at this point in time. A quality conference with many things in store, not only to wrap up this year, but also for the future. And it seems to be in good hands with you, Dr. Crawford. Dr. Scott Crawford, the commissioner of the Kansas Collegiate Athletic Conference, thank you for taking time with us today on the Kansas Sports Podcast. Joey, I always appreciate the opportunity to catch up with you. Looking forward to uh, to seeing you at uh, Media Day here in the in the summer for football. And, and uh, best of luck to you and everything you're doing.